name and welcome to Faith Community Church, the pastor's study. And I want to continue the idea from Sunday about courage. And I read out Joshua chapter 1, 6 through 9, when Christ is telling us, or God tells us, to be strong and of good courage. And then in 7 he says, be very strong and courageous. And all these things are going to prosper you if you stay in the Word of God. Only be strong and courageous. Then again in verse 9, he says, Be strong and good courage, haven't I told you? So in our life, I have a question. What can you do in Christ without courage? Now before I answer that, uh, I read a book this week, 12 Ordinary Men. Fantastic men, you need to get that. There's also 12 Ordinary Women, uh, and this is by MacArthur, and I'll be reading that for next week. But He's talking about courage there, and to reflect, there's three types of courage I spoke about. There's the try courage, go ahead, give it a try, and then there's the tell courage, because it works, and then the trust courage. Others will hear, they'll watch, they'll observe, and then they will follow. Well, obviously, Christ is the best example of that. He, he told us the truth, and uh, he showed us how to do it, so we need to try it. And then we tell others, look what Christ has done in my life. And then others start following him. So it's a cycle that God has started with us. But in the book, he's talking about the 12 disciples. And really, men, get this book. Because uh, Pastor Kevin told me about it. And I just had a witness to it. I ordered it right then while we were speaking. And then I read it Monday and I outlined the whole thing and realized all the personalities of the disciples are there and we fit in one two or three of them but then it also shows how they matured for example uh, John was one of the James and John were uh, sons of thunder they want to call down fire and destroy everybody but then as he matured what did he do he ends up writing the book of John and first John and love 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 well that's a big shift in personality and the book brings that out, and it also challenges us to watch how we grow in our lives. But when he's talking about uh, qualities in our lives, especially in leadership, he says we have to be grounded in, in character. And character produces respect. Respect produces trust. And trust motivates followers. What did we say? Try, tell, trust courage. And it happens. It's a truth of God. Now, then he talks about even in the natural, let alone the supernatural, or he calls them pagans and versus the Christians, but even they recognize that proper leadership requires things like integrity, trustworthiness, respectability, unselfishness, humility, self-discipline, self-control, and what? Courage. And people will follow a man, a person, a movement that proves that. Also this week, I just finished a great book on uh, the uh, biography of uh, the philosopher uh, Seneca. And I never realized that Seneca and St. Paul communicated together. They have eight letters from Seneca to Paul and six letters from Paul to Seneca. And, and it's talking about the philosophy but what Seneca says, nothing except virtue really matters. Now, he was coming from a secular concept. Nothing but virtue really matters. Well, what are we just talking about? The virtues that are found in the Spirit of God or the fruit of the Spirit. Now, as I said here, I was thinking about that and, and just off the cuff, and, and you can make your own list. What can you do in Christ without courage? The answer, nothing. Everything you do takes courage. And a lot of times we want to look at people with courage like, wow, Peter climbed out of the boat and walked on the water. Wow, you know, uh, they called down fire from heaven and burned up all the, the heathens and the sacrifice. Wow. And, no, everything in your life requires courage to follow God. Now think about this. I just wrote... Just wrote it down while I'm getting ready to, uh, to come on to the um, live stream tonight. It takes courage to stand and be counted. We see that Old Testament, New Testament. It takes courage to walk uprightly. 
It takes courage to not turn to the left or to the right. Let your eyes look straight ahead. It takes courage to press forward toward the mark. It takes courage to go into all the world. That really takes courage. It takes courage to love your neighbor as yourself. Think about your neighbors all around you, where you live. Think about your neighbors at work right now. Think about them. How much do you love them? It takes courage to love them. And he doesn't say just love the nice ones. He says to love your neighbors. It takes courage to forgive 70 times 7. It takes courage to give and to sacrificially give. It takes courage to speak the truth in love. It takes courage for getting those things which are behind. I press forward toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. It takes courage to put it behind you and look ahead. It takes courage to obey whatsoever he commands us. And what is God commanding you? What is God telling you? And you will trust him, so you will follow him. What does God have what does he put on your plate that it takes courage? You know you need to say something. You know you need to speak up. You know you need to act. You know you need to give. You know, you know what it is. It takes courage to follow Christ. Or how about it takes courage to submit to one to another? Whoa, we Americans don't like that. It takes courage to submit to God. It takes courage to submit to the scriptures of God. It takes courage to submit to each other and to consider each other equals in the body of Christ. Hand can't say to the foot, you know, nobody sees you down there. I'm the hand. Everybody sees. No, it takes courage to work together as one in the body of Christ. It takes courage to think of others more highly than yourself. It takes courage, now catch this one, to turn the other cheek to be insulted without insulting back. It takes courage also to rebuke with all authority, with truth, with love, with mercy and balance. It takes courage to put off the old man and put on the new man. See, everything you do in Christ takes courage. Stop and think about that. How courageous are you? And you say, well, I'm not courageous. I'm not, yes, you are, <laughs> yes, you are. As you take, it took courage for you to ask Jesus Christ to come into your life. It takes real courage to say, here I am, Lord Jesus. I'm yours. You're mine. I choose to walk with you. That takes courage, people. It takes courage, catch this, to be different. Scripture says you're a peculiar people if you've asked Christ into your life. Now, some of us are just more peculiar than others. But the world knows, catch this, that we are different. We're different because we have the spirit of life. We have the Holy Spirit of God. It takes courage. You might not even know how courageous you are unless you stop and think about these, unless you make your own list and you realize, oh my, God has developed this courage in me and I never even realized. Say it to yourself. I'm a courageous person because I'm in Jesus Christ. So courage, he says, be of, good, of great courage, be Christ-like. So I'm challenging you, think about the courage God has given you. And how can we do that? Really, how can we do all these love, love, love? Love God with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind. Love your neighbor as yourself and watch courage grow. How does that work? Love, love, love. God loves you. Bless you tonight with all the courage that you have.